Barbara Ann, can you just talk about what you make of this rally that we've seen so far in July, which might be the biggest, going back to November of 2020? Thanks for the opportunity, Lisa. Yeah, I think this is a bear market rally for sure, and it's based on hope, not on free cash flow not on the free cash flow of the consumer and not on the free cash flow of the corporate. When you have, what we're looking at is negative real wage growth, which is why we have the lowest consumer confidence in 40 years. And what businesses are facing is the highest PPI rates in 45 years, which is why small business confidence is at an all time low. So these businesses are facing very little visibility over demand for their goods and the cost to produce them which is not a healthy situation. And meanwhile, the market is rallying on, like we said, hope, not free cash flow. So I I'm, I don't think it's sustainable, unfortunately. Barbara, and uh, let's go to the phrase that John Farrow hates the most, which is bad news is good news, which is what Jonathan Golub was talking about in his note today. That that's what it's become, that the more people start to talk pessimistically the way that you do, they talk about possibly some sort of pivot from the Fed. Why is this not the right way to look at it, since it has been the right way to look at it for the past few decades? Well, let's just break that down. Is bad news ever really good news? What you're talking about is the Fed w will not raise rates. So we're talking about multiple expansion, not EPS expansion. And a healthy economy is based on EPS expansion. So, yes, you don't want to fight the Fed, but we also want a healthy economy, don't we? Well, in theory, Barbara Ann, yeah, I would assume so. But on the subject of the Fed and how they would likely view what we have seen in the equity market, a rally, financial conditions getting easier and not tighter, at what point will they have to push back on this? Well, I feel like they induced this rally. <laughs> it was the most confusing. I, I, either I was on the, the wrong call or I, <laughs> I completely misunderstood the market. But what I heard was there's no more guidance because we're tired of being wrong. And then number one, our goal is to bring down inflation for a soft landing. But number two, we understand that's challenging and it's got more challenging in the recent months. None of that's positive to me. And then I think the real error was calling two and a quarter to two and a half a neutral rate. In my economics textbooks, that's not the case, particularly not when inflation's at 9%. So that is very stimulative and accommodative, and that's what's fueling, um, you know, it, it, these forces that at the same time he's trying to squash. So he also said the dot plot is the best indicator. Well, what does the dot plot say? That we have 100 basis points of more increases this year and 50 next year. So rates are still rising, and we have consumer and business confidence falling. We've never raised rates into falling confidence. And the other really interesting experiment is we've never raised rates when the U.S. Fed debt to GDP ratios are so high. So if we do induce a recession, the real risk out there is now you have lower tax receipts and higher interest expense, which is also not a pretty picture. So I'm, this is not easy. And I think as an active manager, what you want to do is really stay nimble and humble because we're now yeah. told we're focus on data, which is going to be much more volatile. Well, of course, Chairman Powell has said they need to be humble as well. As you're doing that, as you're being nimble and humble, what does that mean you want to buy? In the environment you're describing, which, as you say, we've never been in before, in theory, higher rates mean you don't necessarily want to be owning growth. And yet, if the economy is slowing, maybe you want that cash flow. So what do you do? It's a great question. So we actually are net short and we have a mountain of cash to buy great opportunities when we see them. We don't think we're there yet. Um, we have initiated two long new long positions all year. And so the barrier to entry to get into our fund right now is so high. So what is an attractive opportunity to look at? We're talking about companies that are trading for the cash on their balance sheet when we're getting the operating business for free. So that kind of upside downside skew is the margin of safety I'm willing to take. Otherwise, we've been generating tremendous alpha on the short side. I think we have 36, actually, I know we have 37 individual short positions. And this is a real stock picker's market. You would be very happy if you were long Amazon and not Walmart this week, right? That's a stock picker's choice. So being tethered to an index that I think has further downside is where I see the real risk. Barbara, do you see a lot more potholes like the ones that we have seen in specific names? And I'm thinking of some of the darlings of uh, the pandemic era. Do you see more of that coming or is this just an ongoing bleed that the short positions will capture? No, absolutely. I mean, Lisa, if you think about this in a rising rate environment, it's crushing a whole cohort of companies whose business model was built on free money. 
And so all of that speculative has to drain the swamp. And so you're looking at companies that are over levered, you know, are counting on free money, um, and 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 they're they're really going to be in trouble. So we haven't seen the zombies uh, fully deflate yet. And then you're also looking at companies in the pandemic era that took on a ton of debt. You know, you just look at someone like Carnival Cruises, who just did a billion dollar equity raise and still has six times net debt to EBITDA. And if you go by what Royal Caribbean said this week, demand's not there. That is a problem. So, no, the shorts are very, very company specific. It's not it's more company specific than a macro view. But this is a real source of alpha generation in a market like this.